How do you tune mesh drum pads? My answer to that is coming up. What's up guys, Justin Greenwald here. Welcome to 65 Drums. This is the place to keep on top of all things e-drum related. So consider subscribing if you haven't yet. So today I'm talking about how to tune mesh drum pads. Believe it or not, this is a very common question I've been getting recently, not sure why, but I thought I'd make a video about it. How do you tune mesh drum pads? You tune them just like acoustic drums, believe it or not, with one exception. So with acoustic drums, you tune them so they sound good. With mesh drum pads, you tune them so they feel good. So keep that in mind. I would still take your drum key and tune them in the crisscrossing fashion that you use on acoustic drum heads. But when you get it to the right tension and you just like the way it feels, then you're done, really. Now, the one thing you need to keep in mind is that if you keep the tension too loose, you'll actually get double triggering issues or just it'll just be funky, it won't work quite right. So you don't wanna have the mesh drum head too loose, but something at a medium or tight tension will definitely work. What some guys do is their high tom, they'll tune it at kind of like a tight tension and then medium tight and then like medium loose. That way you get a tone shift as you go down from pad to pad. Because even though these don't sound good when you're just playing them without a drum module, they still do have a tone when you hit them. It's kind of a crappy tone, but there is a tone there. And then the bigger the drum shell, it also shifts the tone. So what some guys like to do is at least have that, that sound change as they go down from the high tom to the floor tom. This is definitely a good idea if you play out of a drum amp because you still hear yourself hitting those pads no matter how high you turn up the volume. That's why I really recommend using sound isolating studio headphones. Not all studio headphones isolate sound, but find the ones that do. They really add the experience if you're just always playing out of a PA system or something. So everything's great, but maybe your kick drum or your floor tom just isn't cutting it for you. Way too bouncy, it doesn't feel natural, what do you do? Now remember, I said you can't detune the head too much because you'll get triggering issues. Maybe you've gone down to the limits and it's just too loose, it's not triggering properly, but that's the feel you were going for all along. What can you do? My recommendation is to switch out the kind of mesh drum head that you have. There's a lot of different kinds of mesh drum heads out there. There are one plies like this where you can see right through them. There are the two plies which are a little bit thicker. They, they have an improved feel over the one plies and these are actually my favorites. And then you've got three plies that are really, really thick. The thicker the mesh drum head, the less bounce it will have. So if you wanna have that really loose feel, then I recommend getting a really thick one ply mesh drum head like this, um, like this Go Edrum mesh drum head, or the Drum Tech Real Feel drum heads, or something like a three ply mesh drum head, because sometimes the different kind of drum head will get you the feel that you're going for. This one ply mesh drum head will be bouncy, no matter how you tune it. I do have to warn you though, the thicker the mesh drum head, the louder it will be. For example, this really thin one ply. Listen to how quiet this is. That is incredibly quiet unless I'm hitting the rim, because that changes the volume of everything. But the thicker the mesh drum head, the louder it will be. So you're always gonna be making a sacrifice between the feel of the mesh drum head and how loud it is. But in general, one of the big strengths of mesh drum heads is the fact that you can tune them to whatever tension you want. No matter what kind of mesh drum head it is, you can get a really nice playable feel just by spending some time trying to get the right tension so you get the right playing style you're going for. And because these are drum heads, these have the same weaknesses that acoustic drum heads have. For example, if this was a snare pad, this lug right here, this one right here, would be loose all the time because that's where I hit the rim shot with my left hand. So that lug will continually get loose and you'll have to keep retuning that. But that's not a big deal. It's a sacrifice you'll make to have that closer to acoustic feel. I remember one time when I used to play acoustic drums, I was playing at this church. We got there pretty late. We were supposed to be there half an hour earlier than we were, so I didn't have much time to set up my acoustic drums. Unfortunately, it was also winter, so I'm trying to set up this acoustic drum set as fast as I can, and I hit the drums a couple of times to make sure they sound decent and they sound like trash. So I grab my drum key, I'm running around the drum set, frantically trying to tune this thing so it sounds decent, and that wouldn't have happened if I was using my Roland TD-30K because temperature changes, you know, humidity changes, none of that affects the tone. The tone is locked in. All the virtual mic placement, drum head options, drum shell options, all that good stuff, it's already locked in. A slight shift in drum head tension doesn't really matter on electronic drums. It just affects the feel a little bit, but nothing really to write home about. But I think that's a really big strength of electronic drums. You can tune them to the feel you want, not necessarily the tone you want. How many of us actually tune an acoustic floor tom to that exact tension just because that's how it's fun to play? No, it, it's not 
the best way to tune a floor tom because you actually can't play it very fast because it's so loose. You tune it that way just so you get the right tone out of it. With electronic drums, we have the luxury of tuning all the drums to whatever tension we want. And there's no special thing you have to do. There's no secret, you know, five turns on this lug, two turns on this lug, seven turns on... No, it's you just treat it like an acoustic drum head, except that you don't have to be as careful with them. With most mesh drum heads, you can tune them however you want, as long as it's at least a medium tension or higher, you won't really notice any triggering problems. But if you go too loose, you will notice triggering problems. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is part of my eDrums 101 series. If you want to check out the other videos in the series, I got a whole playlist for them. I'll see you guys in a few. Another thing I should mention is that the different kinds of mesh drum heads will have different loudnesses. Loudnesses isn't a word. So I'm shooting this the day after the 4th of July, and I've got that mandatory 4th of July watching a parade sunburn. I don't know why, but it's like, I'm invincible, I don't need sunscreen. But I always need sunscreen, but I just never wear it. I'm not sure why. Hope you guys have an awesome day.